Okay, let's talk about proportions. And I have uh, two proportions here, uh, this problem and this problem. And we're going to talk about how to solve uh, proportions. And we'll use uh, these two problems as an example. But uh, before we can solve proportions, it's a good idea probably to understand what a proportion is. So we want to define what a proportion is specifically and then talk about uh, the techniques that we can use. And there's a couple different techniques, but I'm going to um, suggest using one primary way uh, to solve proportions. But this is a huge topic in mathematics. So you'll see uh, proportion problems, you know, set up like this. You also um, see it in geometry. So it's very, very important that you understand proportions, but not that difficult. So if you've been um, uh, confused about proportions, uh, stick around for a couple minutes, and I think I'll be able to help you out and clear up any confusion that you might have. Now, uh, just out of curiosity, if those of you out there watching this video or looking at these problems, you're like, yeah, I can I can solve this, then I think it might be a good idea um, to pause the video, work these problems out, and put in your answers, okay, for X and Y, what the solutions would be uh, for these particular problems, because I am going to cover these. And then while you're at it, put into the comments what is, uh, what is a proportion, okay? What's the definition of a proportion? How do you uh, define it? Because this word is uh, used quite often. It's like we will talk in the English language, oh, something's proportional to uh, something. But we don't really, really kind of uh, uh, oftentimes understand exactly what we're saying when we're talking about this word here. So let's make it a little bit more interesting. If you want to put in your responses in the comment section, I'd be uh, interested to see what you have to say. But uh, anyways, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, very briefly, basically I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level uh, mathematics, I could help you out pass your course if you have any difficulty. If you're taking any exam that has math on it, so the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACE, or ALEX exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. You get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams because all those exams, they obviously have a math section. Somebody out there thinks uh, math is pretty important, and it certainly is. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive uh, homeschool math curriculum. You might be interested in checking that out. And if you don't have any math notes, uh, I don't know what you're going to study from, okay? you got to study from something, and that's uh, something that's called notes. So you need to be taking great math notes, okay? That's one of the secrets to uh, success in mathematics. I've been teaching math for decades, and generally those students who take awesome math notes almost always do very well. So uh, if you need some uh, math notes as you improve your notes, uh, you can uh, find my notes. Uh, I'm going to leave links to my, my notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into it. Again, what is a proportion? If you know what a proportion is, and don't go, you know, pause this video and go look it up on, um, you know, the internet and do a quick search. I mean, if you want to do that, I guess you can, but I'm just curious if you, what you think, how you understand this word, but let's get into it now and answer this question. Okay, what is a proportion? Well, basically, okay, a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. So let's, uh, Look at a fraction, uh, one half is a nice fraction. Now, if I'm saying a proportion is two equal, I'll just write it out over here, fractions, let's uh, do this uh, little experiment here. Okay, so I have one half, this is one fraction. Can you think of another fraction that's equal to one half? Now, um, I don't want to use one half is equal to one half. Think of another fraction with some other numbers in it that you know is equal to one half when you reduce it. So some of you are out there saying, well, how about three over six or five over 10? All those are good uh, basic examples. You could have 500 over 1,000. There's infinitely many um, other fractions that we could have that are equal in value to one half. So right here, we have two equal fractions. So this by definition, is a proportion. Okay, now when you study uh, proportions, you oftentimes are studying a related topic called rates and ratios. So generally speaking, in uh, most math courses, you'll study rates, ratios, and proportions together. But uh, just as a real quick um, um, aside, 
Rates and ratios are uh, fractions themselves, okay? So a rate is a fraction, a ratio is a fraction, and then obviously a proportion is two equal fractions. Now, if you want to know more about rates and ratios, which is uh, critical that you understand uh, the difference between these two, because this is very important as well, I have some additional videos on my um, YouTube channel in my pre-algebra playlist and algebra playlist on rates and ratios. Of course, I teach all this stuff extensively in my algebra uh, courses. But uh, let's take a look at this proportion here. So this is, in fact, a proportion, right? So this is, uh, you know, an example of one. But, okay, big deal. We, um, you know, defined it, two equal fractions. What does this mean? What, do we, uh, what are some of the properties of a proportion? Well, there's this thing called the means is equal to the extremes. But basically, I just want you to remember this thing right here, the cross product, right? This is my favorite way of dealing with proportions of cross product. So cross and product. So product is what? Well, that's multiplication. And cross means you're kind of crisscrossing like this. So if I uh, take the product crosswise like so, let's see what happens. So if I have 6 times 1, right, 6 times 1, is that equal to 2 times 3? Okay, well, in fact, it is 6 times 1 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6. So in a proportion, the cross product is always true. Okay, this property will always be true. So you'll see some questions oftentimes um, when you are first studying proportions. Let's do some something real quick. You might have a problem like this. Okay, 1 half is equal to 2 fifths. And the question will be, is this a proportion? I'm, now I'm asking you, is this a proportion? Well, if it is a proportion, the cross product is true. So to check this, we would just check the cross product, 5 times 1. Okay, so that 5 times 1, is that equal to 2 times uh, 2? And we could see that 5 is not equal to 4. Therefore, this right here is not a proportion. Okay, so it's very, very important that you understand what a proportion is, how to check to determine if something is a proportion. And then obviously, we're going to use the cross product to solve proportion problems. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so here is our first problem. Now, I just told you how to do it or how to solve proportion problems. I kind of gave you the main clue. We're going to use the cross uh, product. So if you think you can go ahead and uh, solve this basic problem, you know, pause the video, go ahead. It should take you about, oh, 10 seconds. Uh, tell me in the comment section, what is x equal to? Okay. Now, of course, I'm going to solve this here in one second. But let's look here. Okay. I have this fraction five, ha uh, 5 over 10, right? So what, you know, to you, thinking to yourself, all right, this is like maybe the fraction 1 half. Now, this is not the way that I'm going to uh, solve this problem. I, I just want you to think through this for a second about the definition of a proportion. Okay, so this is five uh, over 10, it's like one half, and I have this fraction over here, but I have a four in the, uh, the numerator, okay? And so if I have a four in the numerator and I gotta come up with another number down here, and I gotta make this equal to one half, what number do you think I need to put down here to make this fraction equal to one half? Now, if, uh, he said, well, 8, because 4 over 8 is 1 half, well, then that's excellent. Okay, that's exactly uh, correct. And that's how we want to be thinking about proportions. But you're not going to uh, think about it in this way when you're solving proportions because the problem is going to get more complicated. But you can see here that this answer should be 8, okay, because uh, 4 over 8 is equal to 5 over 10 because this is 1 half. And this is also one half when we reduce these fractions, and the proportion is two equal fractions. So one half is equal to one half, right? So that's what the answer should be eight. But let's go ahead and use the cross product here to uh, get the correct answer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and multiply across like so. So we're going to have uh, x times five, so that's five x. And then 4 times 10 is 40. We're going to solve this basic equation, divide both sides of the equation by 5, and I get x is equal to 8. Check that out. 
look how nice and easy that was. But, you know, we want to understand what we're doing with the cross product, you know, why this is working and what we're trying to actually accomplish in terms of solving a proportion. This value, when I plug it in here, creates a fraction that's equal to this fraction. So if you got that uh, correct, I must give you a nice little happy face with a little, I'll give you a few stars. This is a pretty basic problem, but you know what? Good job. All right, so let's move on to this next problem. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit more involved. And um, so I got one fraction here, and I'm saying it's equal to this fraction, but I know I want to know uh, the value of y such that it makes this, uh, whatever value I plug in for y, makes this fraction equal to this fraction. Now, if you want to think about it, kind of how we thought about the last problem, just kind of reason through it for a second. Just say, okay, what would this have to be uh, y such that I have to, what number plus 1 would have to be the numerator such that this fraction turned out to be equal to this fraction. Maybe think about it for a second. Of course, we're going to use the cross product to solve this, but um, go ahead and put your answers in the comments if you know what it is. Now, uh, once we, um, you know, kind of think about uh, solving proportions the way I just kind of described it, we now, we now need to go ahead and apply the cross product. So if you can't really think of the value of y, that's okay. I mean, uh, what I want you to do though is to go ahead and use the cross product and your awesome algebra skills to solve for y, okay? Now, of course, when you solve for y, you can always uh, plug that value back in to check to make sure your work is correct, but go ahead and do that now if you want to participate. And let's go ahead and get going, okay? All right, so here is the work. And of course, I didn't want to show you the work before I gave you an opportunity to solve this. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and apply the cross product. So 20 times 3 will be over here. 20 times 3, of course, will be 60. And then we have 6 times y plus 1. Now, this part of the problem, a lot of students get in trouble with. Okay, They'll go, oh, that's 6 times y plus 1. They'll, they'll write it this way, and they'll end up with a 6y plus 1. Okay, so if you made that mistake, don't worry about it. Um, well, we need to learn from it. I don't want you to repeat that, obviously. But that's a very common mistake. Anytime you're dealing with sums and differences in algebra, let me just kind of clear this up like this. So this is y plus 1. It's not explicitly um, clear here that, you know, we could put parentheses in. But I strongly recommend anytime you see something in algebra with a variable, with a plus, or subtraction as sum or difference, you could put in these parentheses just to really make uh, to make it explicitly clear, okay, that you have to apply the distributive property here. So if I put in the parentheses there for you, you would have uh, not made this mistake. <laughs> but I per but I purposely left them out to make sure that you know how to do them. Okay, so anyways, let's go ahead and do this now. So 6 times y plus 1, that's 6 times y plus 1. And then 20 times 3, of course, will be over here. So this is the setup. Now we need to go ahead and solve for y. So first things first, uh, to do this equation, I need to go ahead and apply the distributive property. So 6 times y is 6y, 6 times 1 is 6, and then 20 times 3, of course, is 60. All right, so now I need to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. That gives me 6y is equal to 54. Of course, I'm assuming here that you know how to solve basic algebra algebra equations, one-step, two-step, multi-step equations. If you are um, struggling a bit with this, um, I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra playlist on solving basic equations. You might want to check that out. But anyways, we uh, get down to 6y is equal to 54. Now to solve for y, simply just have to divide both sides of the equation by 6, and I get y is equal to 9. y is equal to 9. Now, if you uh, kind of guess this as being the correct answer without solving the equation, I still must uh, give you a nice happy face and a couple of stars, and now I think I will give you an A+. Plus. That's excellent. Okay, so uh, kind of guessing the right value is, uh, I think that's good. However, you still need to be able to use the cross product to solve these equations as well, because this is a pretty uh, easy problem. But nevertheless, nice job. But let's go ahead and check this uh, answer, y equals 9, just to make sure it is correct. Okay, so if y is equal to 9, let's go down here. Here's our proportion. So if y is equal to 9, if I plug in for y, 9, what would I get? Well, I would get 9 plus 1 
which last time I checked is 10. So it would be 10 over 20. Is that the same as 3 over 6? It is because 3 over 6 is the fraction 1 half. And 10 over 20, I can reduce that to the fraction 1 half. 1 half is equal to 1 half. And by definition, that is a proportion. And y uh, equals to 9 is the solution for y in, to make this a true statement. Okay, so that's a kind of a quick review on proportions. Of course, uh, proportions are used everywhere in mathematics and science. You really got to understand them. But uh, like anything else, you know, you got to first start with the basics. You know, one, what is a proportion? Two, uh, what do we need to use? What techniques can we use to solve proportions? And that would be the cross products. But as you continue your math education, and uh, really get into other uh, levels of mathematics, especially like in geometry, you start learning a lot of different type of um, other properties of proportions that are pretty cool, okay? So there's other things that we can do beyond the cross product uh, to uh, work with proportions, and you'll, you know, you'll wanna learn those as well. But first things first, um, you know, we want to get, you know, get you to understand how to solve these basic proportion problems. And hopefully this video, uh, you know, accomplished the goal of helping you out. And if that is the case, please help me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on uh, YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is always to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. I know uh, for some of you out there, you know, math is not your favorite subject, but you know, listen, don't, don't, uh, confuse you not maybe being you know you know not liking math so much with your ability to learn math everyone can do far better in math than I think they uh, uh, realize but you got to be doing your part as well and that means you know taking great math notes asking excellent questions you know talking to your te uh, talking to your teachers studying all that stuff but beyond that okay if you're not understanding the instruction you're getting then find a teacher that you like and understand hopefully i can be that person for you so please take advantage of my videos and all the videos i will be making but my best math help will always be within my math help program okay so with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day